All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another community demo. My name is Ian Ballou. I'm a Catello developer, and I will be running our demo today. We have a nice lineup of demos. But first, we're just going to start with some announcements about the community. So normally, we're live on YouTube. However, for today, because I am taking over for Nofar, we are just doing a recording. And the recording will be uploaded to YouTube after we're done. If you have any questions, you can find us uh, on LibraryChat IRC at the Foreman. Uh, we also have a Matrix channel. We are currently in the process of figuring out what to do with our Matrix and IRC channels because the bridge is no longer possible to create. So stay tuned for that. On the agenda today, we have some announcements. And then we have a number of Catello related um, demos. A number of them are related to our move to simple content access only in Catello 4.12. So let's start with the announcements. So Foreman 3.8 and Catel 4.10 are now out. There was a bit of a mishap with Catello being announced first, but we have since corrected our procedure, and that shouldn't happen in the future. But now they're all out for everyone to enjoy. And with that, <laughs> We got the template in here. We'll be starting with Jeremy. So I'm going to stop presenting. And Jeremy can start with his first topic. Thanks, Ian. My name is presenter's name, and I'll be presenting topic now. Um, OK, so like Ian said, Ian sort of pre-announced it for me, but uh, uh, simple content access. Um, as you know, it's been the default for new organizations for some time now. And uh, we're moving away from the uh, old entitlement management model. Uh, and so it has been decided that Catello 412 will be the release in which all organizations are now using simple content access. There will be no option to uh, toggle it on or off. Uh, and so the, it's not much of a demo here, but we have changed the UI uh, coming up in Catella 411 to remind people about that. You might be used to seeing a banner here on the subscriptions page, for instance. Uh, we thought that banner has been around long enough. People know what SCA is by now, so uh, we've removed it. And uh, we've moved some of the information that was in that banner to this cute little tooltip here, which shows up if you have a manifest imported, so that's nice. Um, if you are using an organization, uh, if your organization is still not using SCA, rather, uh, we have updated this warning banner with the actual Catello version that we are targeting. So uh, that's pretty much it for the that first change. And uh, let me go back to default organization here. For the second thing I want to talk about today, it's uh, it's around calculating package and errata applicability. Um, and so back when we were using Pulp 2 to calculate applicability, uh, the, uh, the actual calculation happened within Pulp. Uh, and that had some advantages, um, which we are losing when we move from pulp two to pulp three. Uh, that that move from pulp two to pulp three actually has a lot of more, a lot more advantages than disadvantages. But one of the things we lose is the uh, errata calculation in uh, in pulp. So previously, 
what that would mean is when you update a package or when you like uh, enable or disable a repository set for a host, like uh, like over here, uh, your errata would be recalculated immediately. Uh, so let's say for some reason I want to disable base OS and AppStream for my rel8 uh, host here. Override to disabled. And I see that I still have these five errata uh, listed as applicable, but they're not actually because now that repo is disabled uh, and I wouldn't be able to install them if I if I wanted to. So uh, one, just sort of a convenience feature that we have added uh, around recalculating errata applicability is that now that it now it's not only a server side recalculation, it now goes out to the host and uh, does the needful on both sides of things. So um, it's going to run a, a job here on the host, which will cause the package profile to be uploaded. Uh, and that will cause the applicability recalculation on the server side. Uh, so we can see now there it's automatically updated. And now I'm all up to date because I, uh, I no longer have that repo enabled. Uh, previously, that, that option would just have recalculated it on the server, and you'd have to either wait for the next uh, host check-in, which is every four hours, or uh, manually run something on the host. So now in the web UI, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, we've also added an option here to refresh package applicability. And thirdly, an option here on the main vertical ellipsis uh, menu here to refresh applicability. All of these three things, they, they do the same thing. They just run that subscription manager repost command on the host. Makes it a little more convenient for you if you're looking for a uh, this web UI to be updated immediately. Uh, so that is the change I have for today. And uh, let's see if there's any questions. Doesn't look like it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks for that, Jeremy. I actually did have one question for you. So for anyone who's following our development cycle, uh, we are now starting to work on having a new um, host list page. Jeremy, was it talked about having that refresh applicability be a part of the bulk actions? Or was that maybe deemed too heavy to be to be done bulk? It it was um, it was talked about, but it was yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it would be too expensive of a thing. Because right now that that applicability calculation happens in a um, it, in a staggered manner, because it's kind of an expensive calculation. It's a very large uh, SQL query that runs on the server. And uh, doing it for like a 1,000 or 2,000 hosts at, a, at the same time might be just too much. So it, it was actually a conscious decision not to add that to uh, host bulk actions. Uh, you can still make it happen if you really want to, um, but it'll, it'll be more of a manual thing. And also, it's something that if you just wait four hours, all of your hosts will be updated anyway. So it, it shouldn't really be a big deal. It's more of a web UI convenience thing. Yeah, that makes complete sense to me. It'll be really helpful for the users who have one machine that they're needing to inspect, and maybe they're making some on-the-fly changes. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, up next, I am giving a demo. Let me present my screen. So my demo is somewhat related to the move to SCA only. Um, for any users who enjoyed using report templates, you may have known about the subscription entitlement report. And what this did is it gave you a report on all of your uh, hosts' subscriptions, essentially, with a nice filter to see which ones are expiring soon or expiring within a set number of days. And I'll just share. This is 
this is the report template I'm talking about. You have the um, days from now filter to see uh, which hosts are expiring. Now, if you have switched to SCA, like I'm assuming most people probably have, who are using modern Catello, you may have noticed that this report doesn't really do anything anymore unless you have old subscription data in your database to which it shows old, out-of-date information. So we are now updating this report and creating a new one. So I'll start with the updates to this report itself. Um, for people still on SCA until we remove it, you will now see information about your machine system purpose. So you'll see the role, you'll see the usage, and you'll also see the release version of the machine. And so I will do a quick generation of that just to show you what it might look like. And I'll generate the report in HTML just so it's easier to demo. So we have the report here. You can see my hosts or single host. This is the only one that has any uh, entitlement information. If we scroll over, we can see the role, the usage, and the release version. So this is a rel 8 machine. I've set the role to be Red Hat Linux server, the usage, it's a test machine. And then for the release version, we can see it's number 8. So you'll be seeing this information now. However, the more important change for people who have moved to SCA, we can see with this new report, now, this is a pull request that's currently being reviewed, so it's not solidified as of yet. However, the report in its current state is called Host Installed Products. And so while we can't really show consumption information if you're using SCA, we can at least show you what products your machines are using and then some information about them. So the only in, uh, input we have on this report template is called the Hosts Filter, which lets you filter which hosts uh, you're reporting on. And you have a whole slew of information, just like in the previous report. However, there is no subscription information here. So we have um, the same nice information that we also added to the uh, report prior. We had the, the uh, role, the usage, and the release version. Um, what we're also doing now is for the list of products, we used to just show the product names. However, we are also showing the IDs just in case that's helpful for anyone. So I will give a quick, actually, let's see. Yeah, I will quickly, oh no, I've already generated it here. Okay, lovely. So let me just reiterate, the main point of this change is just to make sure that SCA users have something. So if you're using SCA, you'll run this report. You'll see information on all of your hosts. And then the most, the information most related to subscriptions is um, the installed products. So if you come, you look all the way to the right-hand side of my screen, you can see Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then the ID is 479. Now, we did add a check so that for any organizations uh, running SCA will report zero hosts in the old subscriptions entitlement report. But for organizations that are using, or sorry, that, that are not using SCA, it will show the information because that report reports on hosts uh, regardless of organization. So if you have multiple orgs, you can expect um, just the non-SCA ones, the ones actually using subscription uh, management, those ones will still show up on the subscription entitlement report. And that was all for my demo. Are there any questions? All right. And as always, if there are any more questions, you can always find us on IRC or on our community website.
So I'll stop presenting and we can move to the next presentation, which is by Lucy, Visibility of Expiring Rail Client Support. All right, on to you, Lucy. Thank you, Ian. I think you can see my screen. Yep. OK. Uh, as part of uh, rail client support, uh, starting with version 4.11, Catano provides with BDP. Uh, if there are rail client hosts registered with Catano, that will have real end of support event coming in the in the coming year. And this is a background information. Uh, all rail clients have 10 years of free support. The first five years are full support. The second five years are called uh, maintenance support. After that comes extended life cycle support that's got paid. Um, from this page, you can see rail seven uh, is uh, approaching the end of maintenance support on June 30, 2024. And the rail six is approaching end of life support on the same date. And um, when either uh, end of maintenance support or end of extended life cycle support is approaching within a year, Catano uh, is going to send you a notification if you have hosts uh, with that rail version. You can check the notification in the in the in the bell, and here is the message that tells you the uh, the real version number of hosts with that version in your environment, the life cycle, and its end date. It also tells you to check the, ho the report host statuses for detail. To check that report, you go to a monitor. Report, report template. And here's the host statuses. You can select the output and then uh, generate. When the report is, uh, is generated, it will be uh, downloaded automatically. Uh, to save some time, I, I got one downloaded before. So in this report, you can see in the real life cycle column, along with other information for all the hosts in, in your environment. Uh, for non real hosts, it is unknown. And here I got full support um, for real eight and real nine. And for real seven in my environment, uh, I got approaching end of maintenance support and with the date. That's the report. Other than the notification and the report, if you go to the host index page, uh, select the manage columns under the content, we added real life cycle status. Select that one, you will get a new column on this page that, um, that show you the real life cycle for each host. Um, the green check icon means it is in full support. And with the orange uh, info icon, that means uh, the host is going to get one of the end of support event. And I think for the non-royal hosts, maybe we, we should leave the column empty here. Also, you can search hosts based on real life cycle status. You can pick, let's pick for support. So in my environment, I got a real eight and real nine. If I snack approaching end of maintenance, I got a real seven. So for each host, if you check the host status card, you will see the real life cycle information in this card. And for each content host, 
if it, if it is a real uh, client and the getting the uh, end of support event come in, you will see a banner on this page. You can also close it. And that's it for my demo. Any questions? Guess not. Awesome. Thank you for that demo, Lucy. That was great. This is actually my first time seeing that feature in action. I think users are really going to get some good use out of that. So we have one more demo left for the day. And that is Samira, who will be showing off the return of capsule content counts, or I should say smart proxy content counts. Over to you, Samir. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Um, let me share my window here. Actually, let, OK, I'll, I'll get to that later. Uh, so my demo today is around the new capsule content page. And uh, hopefully, you can see my screen here. And what we have done is add more details to this page than was previously available. So when we moved from Pulp 2 to Pulp 3, we lost uh, some things on this page, specifically, for example, these repository counts. And now on this page, you should be able to see those details. Uh, so as you can see, we have added an expandable section for environments. So this is a list of environments that the capsule is tied to. For each one of these environments, you can drill down into the content views that are in this environment and available to the capsule. You can also see if that uh, content view was actually synced. So, and if there were errors with the syncing, you'll see a cross icon here saying it wasn't synced. And this, and you can further drill down into the content view to see exactly which repositories were synced uh, to the capsule. And these counts here are the actual counts for that repository on the capsule itself. This doesn't come from what we have on the satellite server. Uh, so this is pretty much it. I did want to show what the capsule content action is like. So for example, we have an action here. Wait, did I already click on that? OK, no, sorry. Clicked on something else. Let me go back to this. OK. So you'll see an action here now which says refresh counts. What this does is goes to the capsule, the pulp on the capsule, and fetches all the content counts for the repositories that were synced on that capsule. So you have access to refresh that here if you are not seeing something you're expecting to see. Uh, keep in mind, you can only refresh counts on repositories that have already been synced. So if there's some environment and some content view where the sync hasn't happened to the capsule, you won't see the count because the call actually goes out to the pulp on the capsule and that repository won't be found. Uh, we are currently working on this. So this thing that I'm demoing is actually a PR right now under review. So we are adding some more details. So for example, uh, this particular content view, you can see that this is the version 5, which was synced to the capsule. So you can go look at that version. And you'll see three repositories here with some content counts. So if I go to the repository here, you can actually match uh, what the actual content view on the satellite server has or the Foreman server. And you'll see we have this repository here which does not have any content as of yet 
So if you go back and match it to this repository, you'll see this does not have any content as in packages. And similarly for say repo one, it says it has 22 packages. So you can go back and look at this. It has 22 packages and all of these contents. So these content, uh, this list here is a link which will take you to the actual packages because those are indexed in the Foreman server, Catello server. Uh, however, these are not links on the capsule content page because these are not available to the uh, main Catello server. So these won't be links. These are just counts that you can match quickly with what you have on the main server against the capsule itself. And I think that's about it. We are working on this page. Expect more improvements to this page uh, in the coming releases. This feature itself will be available in 4.11. Uh, and yes, that's about it. Awesome. Thank you, Samir. Were there any questions for? Samir's demo or any of the previous demos? All right, sounds like no. So thank you to all the demo presenters. Those are some awesome demos. And yeah, we will see you at the next community demo that should be happening in uh, three weeks. Thank you very much, and until next time.